Well, hello everyone, and welcome to another edition of Let's Paint a Mini. So I figured that we would move on with more of the Doom Reaper miniatures, and we are moving right on to the shotgun guy. This is just the regular dude with the, uh, the regular zombie man with the shotgun guy, with the shotgun. All right, and he's um, he's gonna be a pretty simple one. He's gonna be simpler than the uh, zombie man, at least, just because he's got a very, very singular color. Well. Mm -hmm. I don't know if he's going to be more difficult or not, but let's just kind of see see how he goes. The first thing that I'm going to start with actually are going to be the uh, is going to be the shotgun itself. So I'm going to take out some honed steel here, and I've already shaken this up, so I'm just going to get it out of my little plastic surface right here. And I think I can just continue to use my older uh, medium Reaper round brush here, and we're just going to really quickly uh, go over the shotgun, like the barrel and all that good stuff. Shouldn't take too long. Now the uh, underside of the barrel here, I don't know what you would call it other than just the grip. Um, I'm not a, a huge gun aficionado, so I don't know the um, technical terms of everything, but um, that, like the, the cocking mechanism or whatever, we're going to leave unpainted because that is going to, uh, I, I think it's supposed to be made of wood, so we're going to go over that with our brown color later on. So if you can, I would say just go around it. All right, and that's all that we're really do, uh, doing with the steel color for now. So I'm just gonna go ahead and rinse that brush off. Now I didn't mention this, but uh, the, uh, the first thing that I did was I actually coated him in a little bit of a darker layer than I usually do. Well, sometimes. Uh, so I used to do layers of black, and I'll still do base coats of black, but here I used a base coat of Scaven Blight Dinge, or Scaven Blight Dinge, it's a Citadel uh, paint. Uh, but it's just a very dark gray. It almost kind of looks black on the camera. It's not quite as black as, you know, like my little base right here. Uh, but it is very dark. That's what I used for this base coat because the shotgun guy has a much darker uniform than the regular zombie man. All right. And now we're going to move on to the actual uh, stock of the shotgun as well as the cocking mechanism and the little uh, pouches that he's got on the back of his belt here. And we're going to start with some earth brown. And we're still not doing anything super detailed just yet, so I think I'm just going to continue using my medium-sized brush here. Like I said, we're just going to start with the, the butt of the shotgun, or the stock, or whatever it's called. Again, I'm not a huge um, gun buff, so I'm not, I, I don't know any of the technical terms or anything like that. Anyone is welcome to... Uh, Way, you know, say what they are in the in the comments below. If you want to say, hey, that's called the stock, or hey, that's called the bud, or hey, that's called the wood part of the gun. Like I don't know, <laughs> you know what? Whatever you want to say, uh, feel free to let me know in the comments. Okay, there we go. So now we've got the the layer of brown there with the shotgun. So we're good there. And like I said, let's get these uh, these little magazine holsters on the back here as well. Might as well just do the the belt too. You see, uh, he's wearing a little bit of a belt there, so let's just let's just get some brown on there as well. Okay, there we go. So now we've got some brown on the belt as well as the uh, little pouches on his belt there uh, too. So I'm gonna rinse that brush off. And the next step, I kind of want to uh, dry brush the uh, the things that we just did there. And I really, really like the combination of dry brushing earth brown and leather brown right here. I really, really like leather brown. It's a really, really good shade of brown. You can use it for a lot of things. You can use it for uh, some highlighting of, you know, brown, like what we're doing right here. You can also use it as a base coat for, you know, teeth and bones and claws and stuff like that. So it's a really, really cool, versatile color. Uh, but what we're gonna do is we're gonna whip out our little uh, dry brush right here, our small sized Citadel dry brush. And we're just gonna work our way a little bit into our little tiny, little, little tiny paint puddle right here. I'm gonna get some paint onto the brush, but not too much. I'm gonna wipe off most of it. That's why it's called dry brushing, is because there's such a little amount of paint on the brush that it is almost dry. Uh, one of somebody in one of my previous oh, and then we're just gonna you know, like I said, kind of go over all the brown bits that we just did there, and that'll be it. Uh, somebody in one of my uh, previous videos uh, said something like. Um, I think it was the Loiger, said that it's technically an overbrush and not a dry brush because a dry brush uh, is defined by wiping off the paint with a paper towel. Um, I'm, I'm not really sure why that distinction is there, 
uh, maybe that's a technical thing. I have no idea. Um, but the principle is the same, and that's that you have hardly any paint on the brush. Uh, but by doing this little um, uh, thing right here, you're not wasting so much paint. You know, you're not just like scooping the, the, the paint onto your bristles and then just wiping it off with a paper towel, because you waste a lot of paint if you do that. Um, this is just a, uh, a little bit more of an efficient way to do it, in my opinion at least. I would say don't worry about getting a little bit of paint onto his fingers, because we're about to uh, go over all of the fingers as well as the head and all that with uh, a skin color. We're going to do that in a minute, but in the meantime we're just really lightly applying this leather brown over all the brown, or over all the earth brown that we just did. And that gives it just a little bit of shade and a little bit of depth. You can kind of see that the, the corners of the magazine pouches there are a little bit lighter than um, just the sides as well as the belt and all that good stuff. And that just gives it a little bit of depth, a little bit of color variety. And I think that that looks pretty nice. All right, and that's about it that I want to do with the leather brown. So I'm going to wipe off my brush. All right, and then next up, I'm going to use uh, some tanned skin right here. And we're just going to use this or, yeah, all of, all of the skin bits and all that. So that's what we're gonna use for his head, as well as his hands and all that. I'm gonna uh, improve my brush game just a little bit here. I'm gonna be using my medium reaper round brush, but this is a newer one that I had. You can kind of see a little bit of a difference here. This one is just in newer condition, so it's in a little bit better shape and all that, and I'm gonna be able to get uh, some, some more precise details and, and better bristles and all that. So I'm gonna use this, and I'm just gonna go over all of his arms, hands, and head. What the heck? Where did that come from? <laughs> Apparently I dropped a paint or something on, on my table at some point. <laughs> I don't even remember doing that. I don't know how that happened. Okay, so I've got the arms there, so now I'm going to go ahead and do the head. Alright, there we go. So now we've got his head and his arms with a nice, uh, even layer of tan skin. So I'm going to rinse off my brush. Alright, and then next up, what we want to do is we want to continue with our, our layering and our shading. So what we're going to do is we're going to use some tanned highlight here. And then we're going to be doing some dry brushing over the skin in the same way that we did dry brushing with the shotgun uh, stock and the hip pouches and all that. We're going to do the same kind of thing here with uh, his skin, and this will just add a little bit of a uh, little bit of uh, you know a little bit of depth, color variety, and, and shading and all that with his skin. So same kind of thing. I'm going to take my dry brush right here, and I'm just going to wipe off most of the paint on my brush, you know, just get some paint on there, but wipe off most of it. And then we're just going to go ahead and go across all of his uh, arms and head. All right, there we go. So now we've got uh, some layering going on there with his skin and all that. And he's got a lot of depth there. Now. We don't have a lot more to do, actually, but all the rest of the stuff that we're going to do is all kind of, like, technical stuff. So the last thing that we're going to do before we move on to, you know, any of the special fun stuff is we're going to continue to uh, work on his outfit a little bit. Uh, we've already got a layer of that Skaven Blight dinge on there, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to add another layer to it because I want it to be nice and even, nice and smooth. And then we're going to be doing a different kind of shading technique after that using an actual Citadel Branch shade. And we'll go over that uh, as soon as we finish up here. So what we're going to do is we're going to take out this uh, this dark, dark gray right here. Oh man, this stuff is thick. Very, very thick. Okay. Uh, and I think that I can continue using the older um, round brush. And we're just going to go over his entire outfit one more time with the Skaven Blight Dinge, and that will just give a nice even coat over his entire uniform. Alright, so now we've got a nice even layer of that Skaven Blight Dinge 
all over his whole armor. You don't have to use that per exact brand or color or anything like that. You basically just want to have a really, really dark gray. Not quite black, but pretty close. That's the kind of coloration that you're wanting. If you want, you can probably even get away with a little bit of a bluish tinge. Like, you could probably get away with a navy blue or a... Not navy... Navy, navy blue? Yeah, like a really dark navy blue or something like that. You could probably get away with that as well. But yeah, so that's what we were looking for there. All right, and the next thing that we're going to do is we're going to move on to uh, some shade that we want to use to add a little bit of shade to his face because we want some, some real range and variety there with his face as well as the uniform itself. All right, so what I've got here is I've got uh, some Citadel brand Nuln Oil Shade. Now, I really like to use Agrax Earth Shade, because uh, that's a really, really good color to use universally for pretty much any type of miniature. But for this guy, who doesn't have a lot of browns and it's all just kind of blacks and grays and all that, we're going to use this Skaven Uh I can speak English. We're going to use this uh, Nuln Oil instead. All right, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take out my medium shade brush here. This is a Citadel brand medium shader. And we're also going to use this on the shotgun as well. But this is just going to add some shade and color variety and all that to his uniform. Yeah, there we go. That's, uh, that's making it look a little bit more black and all that. That's good, okay. And we're going to use it on the shotgun as well. And that will give some shading on the shotgun. Oh. Oh. Got way too much on there. You can get some on the uh, the arms as well. I don't think it'll hurt too much. Yeah, oh, I got way too much on here. Need to wipe off a whole bunch of that, actually. I think we'll be in good shape. All right. All right, and then we're going to get a lot too on the base and that'll just give some variety on the base. All right, and that gives him quite a lot of shade and a lot of color variation too. Now I want that to completely dry before I move on to anything else. So I'm gonna give him a little while to dry. I'm gonna give him maybe a good like 20 minutes or so to just kind of like hang out and I'll move on to something else productive and come back to him. So I'm gonna let him dry and I will be right back. All right, now he is looking nice and dry there. He has got his shading uh, quite dry. So now we're gonna move on to doing some, some bloody stuff and some detail stuff. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take out just a basic blood red color right here. We're gonna do a couple of things with this. Now the first thing that I wanna do is I wanna get started on the eyes. Because like the zombie man, I think that the shotgun guy has somewhat glowing red eyes, and I would like to try to bring those out just a little bit. Now what we can do for that though is uh, we can start with a little bit of red. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take out this blood red and I'm gonna use a small sized reaper round brush here. And I'm just going to use this red color to kind of poke into his eyes a little bit. And then we'll do something in addition to that in a moment. Okay, there we go. Now we've got some, uh, just a standard layer of red over his eyes. All right, and the next thing that I want to do is uh, I'll go back to using the older brush that I was using a minute ago, and we'll use this, this one that's in kind of rougher shape, because next we want to move on to the actual blood stains. Now, here's the thing. In the last video that I did, well, in, in, the, in the Zombie Man video, what I used was this Blood for the Blood God. It's the Citadel brand uh, technical stuff, and it's fantastic. It's the best thing that you're going to get for blood. Uh, like, you know, the most realistic looking blood that you can get. Now, the thing about that, though, and I noticed this in one of my older videos, is that when you try to use this over a really dark color, like black or dark gray, it barely shows up. Well, you don't, we don't want it to just barely show up. We want it to be there. So what we're going to do is we're going to do something that might be a little bit convoluted, a little bit complicated, but I want the same texture, the same type of blood color to be used here as I did for my zombie man and as, as well as for all of my other two miniatures as well. So I want to keep using that stuff. 
But in order to make this stuff show up on the uniform, we're going to start with just a little bit of this blood red. So what, I was, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to take out some of this blood red and I'm going to decide on what parts of his uniform and what parts of his sculpt I'm going to have blood on. And I'm just going to sort of dot it, you know, here and there. Okay, so yeah, there's there's a nice bullet wound there in his chest. So that's fine. All right. Now he's also got, I think he's got kind of the the side of his mouth is kind of torn out. It's kind of uh, can, you, can you focus? Can you focus a little bit? Well, anyway, the the left side of his mouth, I feel like is kind of torn open a little bit. So we're going to apply that right there as well. He's also got this big old leg wound right here on his right leg. Kind of dab along the rim of the wound a little bit too. That'll be fine. Okay, and he's also got a great big old uh, hole in his back here too. So let's just dab that. And then next up, we're gonna go ahead and get his hands a little bit. Just a little bit. I don't wanna completely cover his hands in blood, even though the original pixel art for the shotgun guy features, you know, a pretty substantial amount of blood on his hands. We're gonna just kind of lightly go over them. Okay, we're also gonna get a little bit of blood on his knee right here, just cause, you know, nothing wrong with it. Okay, and then we're going to get some on the fronts of his boots. And then last up, I think I'll just get a little bit on his head. Just a little bit. There we go. Now he's got some blood kind of all over his body there. Make this wound up just a little bit more prominent. Got some blood even coming down his torso just a little bit. Yeah, there we go. Now, I would honestly say that if you just want to stick with uh, that, that will probably do your mini just fine. Uh, but I think, well, first of all, I'm going to finish the eyes. Like I said, we're going to start with a layer of just a little bit of red for those eyes. And then next up, I'm going to, I really want them to glow. I really want them to, to be brought out a lot. So I'm going to use some lemon yellow here. It's kind of a, a bright, somewhat pale yellow. And we're going to take out a little itty bitty teeny tiny small brush and I'm just going to dot his pupils with this yellow color. That should give his eyes a little bit of a glowing sort of look. Yeah, it's a little bit off, but that's okay. Yeah, that 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 gives him a nice sort of sort of glowing staring off at at you from the side a little bit kind of look. And that's, that's nice. That's the kind of thing that we're going for there. Okay, and then next up, I'm just gonna finish up a little bit. I really, really want that blood to have a nice, wet, glowing sort of look. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take out my blood for the blood god, because I love this stuff so much. What we're gonna do is we're just going to lightly put this over all of the blood effects that we already did. And that should brighten up the blood pretty substantially and make it actually kind of noticeable on his very dark, you know, gray-red armor. The only uh, piece of advice that I would really offer when it comes to applying blood uh, to your miniature is the same advice that I use for every miniature when you're using blood, is just remember, less is more. Don't go too crazy. Only apply it in certain spots. You know, you need to have negative space for everything, including how much blood you have. You know, the spaces where he's got blood are going to stand out if he's got other spots on his body where there isn't blood. So don't just splotch blood everywhere, because then you might just get a little bit out of hand. You get a little bit coming down the side of his mouth here.
All right, and I think that that will about do it. And then I'm gonna close the lid on my paint here, rinse off my brush. And there you go. So that is a Doom Shotgun guy. I think that he looks pretty decent. I think, yeah, his eyes might be a little bit rough, but you know what, that's okay. But yeah, that's that's the Doom Shotgun guy from Reaper's Doom Miniatures. I really, really like the way that the blood showed up. Yeah, there you go. So if you start with the uh, like a little bit of just regular red paint underneath, and then you use that blood for the blood god over it, that will uh, help to bring out the blood when you have really, really dark armor or a really dark uniform like that. So, oh, you know what? Shoot, I didn't get uh, his back. Oh, oops. <laughs> I missed a spot. I missed a spot. I'm glad that I, you know, I, I've i said in old videos, and I haven't said this in a while, always give your mini a once over in between steps and after you're done. Because sometimes you're just going to, you know, have a little whoops moment and you just, you miss something. Uh, and I haven't been doing that uh, very much lately. So, yeah, always give your mini a little bit of a once over because sometimes you might just miss something like what I did right here. There we go. That, that's that got a nice, nice solid uh, back wound there now. All right, so there you go. There, there we're actually done now. That is the Doom Shotgun Guy from Reaper's Doom Miniatures. If you like the video, go ahead and throw it a like. If you want to see more uh, board game stuff, if you want to see more miniature stuff, just kind of uh, that sort of thing in general, go ahead and subscribe to my channel. I do a lot of board game stuff, a lot of miniature things. So you can uh, check back anytime there. You can follow me on Twitter if you'd like. I'm at uh, twitter.com slash paintamini. Uh, username is at paintamini. So uh, you can follow me there if you'd like. I'll occasionally post some stuff just for fun. Uh, but I will be definitely be doing more of the uh, Reaper Doom miniatures. I will definitely be uh, doing the whole set just as time goes on. If you want to see any particular mini next, just let me know in the comments below. Otherwise, we'll see you next time on Let's Paint a Mini. Thanks for watching, everybody. Bye.